We have a big team of tech reporters with a deep understanding of tech and how it affects the world we live in. That is The Verge, ladies and gentlemen. The same company that uploaded this PC build guide on their YouTube channel of 2.1 million subscribers. And it is basically the worst PC build guide the world has ever seen. It is full of misinformation, bad advice. And a lot of YouTubers have already commented on this, but I wanted to put my own spin on it and I wanted to spread the word as much as possible because I want people to realize how, you know, uncredible uh, the the guys at the verge are when they say we have a big group of tech experts what not what not they don't they have no idea what they're talking about so let's take a look at how to build a custom computer from the verge a thermal paste applicator an allen wrench thermal no, does anybody ever actually use a thermal paste applicator an allen wrench I've never once built a PC using an Allen wrench. Everybody in their households would likely have a Phillips screwdriver, and that's all you need for PC building. Some tweezers to tighten up the wires. And here it is. This is where the cringe starts. These are not tweezers, my dear. These are zip ties. I have a lot of them, and hey, check it out. I also have Allen wrenches, but I've never once used them. For building computers a swiss army knife which hopefully has a phillips head screwdriver in it all right so here and i got some problems here who the heck builds a computer with a swiss army knife what what, what kind of office are, do you live in the verge with 2.1 million, sub, million subscribers that you can't afford one of these these are intrinsic to technology nobody who works on gadgets laptops pcs and cars and tech does not have one of these why does your office with so many dozen pcs and so many dozen tech employees not have one of these but you have tweezers though stupid Last but not least, an anti-static bracelet, which is to protect you and the parts. That is a baller band. That is not an anti-static bracelet. Somebody in the tech industry would know. Anybody in the tech industry would know. That is not an anti-static band. Pay close attention to the brace that goes at the back of the computer. You always have to make sure that you really... It's a brace? What are you, a dentist? There he goes with his freaking Swiss Army knife, eh? Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't it have been better if you had one of these little duders, this little one dollar duder that could have helped you reach the screws properly at the right size, and this is also magnetized for screws when it falls into your case. Uh, it's pretty fast RAM. It's 2,666 megahertz, I believe. So it's pretty fast and. 1,666 megahertz is the second slowest DDR4 RAM <laughs> configuration. Open the slots first and just aligning the stick with the middle of the strip, not with the end, and just lining that up with the logo. So once you hear that solid clasp and you don't see the gold connectors on the side anymore, that's when you know the RAM is in. Step. The, the RAM has a key, right? It has a little tooth, a little broken tooth at the middle. They're keyed. And well, all you have to do is just find the key, match the key to the slot, and press with two thumbs and wait for each thumb to make a click. Click, click. That's how you explain how to install RAM. This is from Kingston, and it's 480 gigabytes, so it's not a lot, but you can always upgrade this and swap it out, and it's only held down by one screw and the latch, so it's really simple and really straightforward. Speed for gaming is important when it comes to a hard drive. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him play around with his, with his <laughs> Swiss Army knife. <laughs> Look at him go like, oh, I have this super tiny screw. What, I'm what am I going to do with a super tiny screw? I'm going to hold it high up in the air and put it on top of my screwdriver with no magnetism at all. And what am I going to do when it's on top of my screwdriver? I'm going to 
tilt my screwdriver like this and then put it on top of the M NVMe screw. What happens if you don't have a magnetized screwdriver, the one that you can buy for $1, and you put a screw on top of it, and then you twist it like this down to your case? What happens? Oh, your screw falls off into the case, and then you have to find the screw, and then you could possibly damage some parts, all because you couldn't afford a $1 screwdriver. Now, which lane you choose depends entirely on what other parts you're going to put in the system. I'm just going to pick the top one. Absolutely wrong. He's absolutely wrong there. Obviously, you pick the top one because that one has the most bandwidth. Not all PCIe slots are the same. And that's why most graphics cards are mounted on the top PCIe slot because that is the one with the fastest bandwidth. Anybody who's anybody who's learned how to build a gaming computer, who's installed a GPU, will know this. So all you have to do is take the brick and make take sure that you brick. align it with these little insulating pads so that the power supply doesn't short circuit and come into contact with the rest of the system. The rubber pads on the bottom are not for insulation from electric shock, therefore vibration dampening anybody who's anybody who's built a computer in his life would know that they're not for insulating against electric shock slide it in oh, nice no. until you have a snug fit this is terrible this is potentially a fire hazard because fans on the power supply are on the wrong side they're not breathing they don't have any intake because it's essentially facing a wall on that side of the case. What the case is designed for is that the power supply should be facing outward or the fan should be facing outward so it could pull air in. This is a potential fire hazard. For example, somebody like you who just builds on potentially cheaper power supplies. For the beginner out there who builds on their power supplies thinking, Oh, I got to coat my power supply now with some paper on the on the sides because I could be electrically shocked because there's no rubber in my case. This is misinformation. Now you just take the required screws and you tighten and screw in. <laughs> because he has such a terrible screwdriver, he had to do... <laughs> So next step, we're going to install the CPU core. In this case, it's gonna go on the top end of the case, and we're just gonna have the hose hang out for a little while until we install the processor, which is gonna come a little later. You rarely install the processor last because it's very hard to get down there on your motherboard and get your fingers in there to put a CPU in there at the deepest level of your motherboard and clap clamp it in look at this he installed the graphics card first he's installing the fans first before the CPU what you want to do is you have your motherboard on the table and you get your CPU and you put the CPU on the motherboard first you lock it down done that means your entire motherboard is free of anything including GPUs including memory so you have enough space to get your elbow in there, to get your whole hand in there, so you can get your fingers down there and put your CPU in and clasp it in. Just be sure to try to place it in the system first before you install it, because you can see it. He's installing the radiator without the fans. This is a choice you can make, but generally you don't do that. You put the fans on your radiator, and then you install both of them, the radiator and the fans, on the system. So there's nothing special about this screwing in process. They're just really long screws because they go through the entire frame of the cooler. He's using the wrong screws on the wrong side of the radiator. He's potentially damaging the radiator because you don't know if those screws push in the entire way. Why? He should be using a short screw on the side of where the radiator mounts to the case. That's for the fans because the fans are this thick and the, uh, the screws go through the fans into the radiator to mount them to the radiator. If you read any manual, you would know this, but holy God in heaven, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. So next up, cables. 
Every power supply is gonna come with a big bag of Velcro cables. It's kind of daunting at first. Wrong! Some power supplies have built-in cables and no bag of cables. This is a beginner PC build guide? This is a build guide for people who don't know how to build PCs. They have a power supply that has all the umbilicals coming out of it. And they're gonna ask, where are my bag of cables? I've been robbed. Are you saying I'm lying? The Verge with 2.1 million subscribers has every power supply has a bag of cables. This guy has no idea what he's talking about. So you always have to find the ones that are gonna fit. In this case, you need to match wouldn't it have been better if he described each one of them, told you which one goes where, instead of just telling you that you have to find the ones that fit? Like you can wing it for some reason? Matching that cable from the motherboard, threading it through the back, and attaching the 24 pin header to the power supply so that we can have one of the connections complete. He has yet to install the CPU. <laughs> He's putting in power supply cables before the CPU. We're installing the CPU, the heart of the computer or the brain, depending on how you look at it. So to do this, we're just gonna remove the plastic covering that they put on the motherboard. What, what, no, gonna take what are this you doing? Plastic part out, we'll just toss. What the heck did he just do? And he goes like, last Jedi level. <laughs> you don't throw those away because when your motherboard, for example, needs to be repaired or needs to be, you know, you know, let's say you got a lemon of a motherboard, you put the cover back on so the, the pins don't get damaged when you're shipping it back to the, uh, the manufacturer. And uh, the manufacturer will never honor your warranty if you lose the socket cover. And also, you do not just pull it out of the socket. It pops out after you put your CPU in, which you would know if you would have already put your CPU in before all of this garbage that you did on your case. And we're gonna use the CPU applicator. This is a special little part that not everyone may get, but this CPU applicator? Who the heck uses that? You just drop your CPU in. This makes it much harder because that's another thing you have to hold on to that your CPU could potentially fall off of while putting it into your motherboard with all the crap that you already put in there with the with the fans with the gpu you're just making it worse so we're about to apply thermal paste to the cpu every cpu cooler actually comes with a bit of thermal paste already neatly applied in a circle around it but it's usually not enough it's good essentially pc building practice to have a little bit extra it's good pc building practice to have a little extra who told you this? Hey kid, you know what's good PC building practice? Adding more thermal paste into the pre-applied, perfectly applied thermal paste on the all-in-one cooler. And you know what? Mixing a different brand of thermal paste to the thermal paste already pre-applied so that you get two substances there with different, you know, thermal coefficients and whatnot, because that's gonna make, you know, it's super efficient, right? So you're gonna see that there are. Oh my god! What did he do? Or rather, like he went all bukake up in that thermal paste. And look at his RAM. He put it in a single channel configuration, which is terrible. Some some motherboards will not boot in single channel configuration if you put two RAM sticks together. So we fully built the. Oh my god! What is going on with that cable management? Like he didn't even care. This is atrocity as its finest. What are we looking at? So this is what he did when he did um, the cable management. And he actually used his quote unquote tweezers slash what we know as zip ties. But he didn't do a very good job of actually cleaning up. Or he didn't do any job of cleaning up. And holy crap, look, there's a missing screw on his all-in-one water cooler pump. What? Well, how would you forget that? Why, you just had three and there's an extra one and you just threw it away just like your socket cover? And look at this. The tubing that goes into his all-in-one water cooler pump contacts the 1080 graphics card that he has. That's bad practice because, you know, 
a little bit of transference, a little bit of rubbing, a little bit of, you know, issues there that could arise from a rubber tubing or a braided rubber tubing being heated up and contacting a very delicate PCB on the graphics card. And that thing contains liquids that could potentially short out the system if it gets damaged by the heat generated by the graphics card. It's obviously tried to clean up the cables because the zip ties are there or so-called tweezers. Some tweezers to tie up the wires. All you got to do is route the cables in the right holes and plug them in as close as possible to their routing holes. Now it looks like he managed to find the right screw for the fans. Oh good. <laughs> he got that one right bros. <laughs> Oh man, look at this rat's nest. I'm averaging 120 FPS and that's only because I've actually locked the game to that frame rate because... He's locked the game at 120 FPS, why? Aren't we supposed to be benchmarking something? Why even bother? Why even bother showing this clip? How about you fix your goddamn PC, build it the right way so you get you can actually test the frame rates more than 120 FPS, bro? And of course now we also have a computer to test and benchmark games here at The Verge. No, 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 no. You do not get the right to benchmark games or test PC components if you build PCs like that, bro. You put your PSU the wrong way. You oversaturated in thermal paste. You you made you mix two thermal pastes together. You made a rat's nest for cable management. You even missed one screw on your all-in-one water cooler. Your radiator hoses contact the 1080 graphics card. Ain't nobody gonna respect your benchmarks after this, bro. Oh, you're teaching you're teaching beginner PC builders that they need a Swiss Army knife. Oh, but don't they need one of these? What are you doing? 2.1 million subscribers ain't got a freaking screwdriver. Doesn't know what a heck tweezers are versus a zip tie. Doesn't know how to mount an all-in-one water cooler. Doesn't know how to put a power supply into their case. Thinks a power supply can short circuit by contacting the metal case. Thinks that they can they can just mix thermal paste together and just overflow their entire system with thermal paste. What is going on, The Verge? We have a big team of tech reporters and a deep understanding of tech and how it affects the world we live in. I don't want people starting out into this business to learn the bad PC building practices you're going with this. Proper PC building practice to add more thermal paste. Come on, man. Sheesh. We have a big team of tech reporters and a deep understanding of tech. Oh, that's the world.